you know, we we see all these things inside the classroom and we kind of make a c- conclusion, like this person's not ready or they're, they're not participating in class, for example. What are the things that we can do, um, like, to understand? And, and this kind of relates to the next uh, section. And, of course, if you guys have any questions, like, we are here to answer them. I've seen a few of them, so uh, I'm glad to have the interaction today. Um, one is about, oops, not that one. <laughs> Uh, it's behind the behavior, right? So the sometimes there's this story behind all these behaviors uh, that we see and and we're, yeah, like that we're experiencing, we're struggling with, um, you know, that we we see either at home or we see uh, in in an educational setting. And I think you've done some work to kind of get behind them, like it, it, to understand their story. Can you tell me a little bit about like, what does this process look like? How do we get to that point, Rochelle? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I did want to say one thing, the the book report, that was my mom. I remember having mm-hmm. to do book reports in front of classmates too. Although it, it's interesting, uh, in 10th grade, I think I had a public speaking course and I was so afraid of it. But then I just, I loved it because I got to speak about what I was interested in. And so, mm-hmm. but uh, back to your question, getting to know the students, you know, I've had some students over the years and there were, we, we, this happens to all of us. We find out about students that may be new to our school, new to our classes, and we have information or teachers share information about them. And you have this idea about who they are. And I had some experiences over the past probably eight or 10 years where I had some students coming in. And of course, I was a little bit nervous about what to expect. And I feel like now that I can look back and I had one big experience where I I really for the, you know, I finally saw the student not the behavior is what I had referred to it as, is I was kind of preparing each day in a sense that I had that student class based on what I knew about their behaviors and uh, the experiences that they had in classes before mine. And that wasn't something that I I should have been doing, nor that I'm proud of now, but that was just part of the process. And that was like the norm, I guess you could say every single year. And then I had an experience a couple of years ago where same thing, the student, I knew about and I would hear and I'm like, oh, how, how's this going to go? You know, you're not, we're always nervous as teachers because it, in our classrooms, we never know what could happen at any given minute, right? We have to be prepared for everything. We have to be flexible, especially this year with like all the things and technology, you name it. Yeah, it no kidding. Nothing <laughs> is ever perfect. But the, uh, but the one day I just had a chance to actually sit and work with the student one-on-one. And I remember it was on a Friday after that class period was over. I just, I didn't really know how I felt. It was a, it was an interesting feeling. And I remember talking to one of my friends and saying, you know, I don't know what just happened, but I feel like I finally saw and got to know this student. And I didn't remember any of the other stuff or information or anything else. Like I got, I feel like I really connected with who this student actually is or what their interests are potentially. And uh, that from that day on, I kept trying to keep that focus. It's like, see the student, not the behavior. And when there is a behavior, why is there that behavior? Like, what is the reason what's happening, getting to know the student? And that is something that in a book uh, that I'll have coming out later this year, I actually was reading, proofing some of it this morning. And it was a story that somebody else had shared where very similar to mine, they were prepared based on everything that they had learned about a particular student. But it wasn't until they sat down and they had this one-on-one conversation, they really got to know the student and they figured out why some of the behaviors were happening or you know what the life was like for this person and that made a big difference and so when i say you know see the student not the behavior sometimes that's hard because like over all these years of teaching i've had i've had a lot of really interesting things happen in my classroom and I don't tend to yell a lot. And sometimes students will say, oh, we heard Miss Hope yelled. And I say, really? Like I can count like on both hands and all the years I've been here, the times that I've really <laughs> yelled. And I, and I don't, I don't like it. It's I don't good all the time. And then there's that one yeah. moment and then you're, yeah. you're always the yelling person, right? Like you, there is no going back. Like yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, I experienced the same thing with my kids as well. It's like, 
You know, like nine times out of 10, you are so great, but they don't remember any of those. They remember the one time that you yelled. It's like, yeah. And I just, I, I, I don't, I don't like it, but I've learned that I really, when something happens, like initially before it was like, I, I would react. It was a disciplinary action. You know, what was the thing that I had to do because this is what happened. And now I'm more about, let's talk about it. And there were other times I had a student do something with digital citizenship, big deal, right? We're using a tool like Nearpod, where it's not like back in the day where you had the etch a, yeah, etch a sketch and you could write, you could shake and it would erase. Like students have the phones yeah. in their hands and if they're writing on, they're using a tool like Nearpod and you have it on your screen, it's right there. And, and it was a lesson student. And the student said, I guess I'm going to have a couple days detention. And I said, well, why, why do you think that? And they said, well, because that's what always happens. And I went, I think I'd kind of just rather have a conversation with you. And when the word came out of my mouth, I, I was surprised at myself because part of me was like, but wait, maybe I have to give detention because of what happened. But then I thought, you know, I was kind of to blame too, because I didn't give them enough instruction. I, I just figured you have the phone, you know, what's going to happen whenever you write something on your phone. But just because they have the technology doesn't mean that they necessarily know the impact of it or where it's going to go. And so I took full ownership in that as well. And I said, I would rather have a conversation with you about why that happened and what we should do. And I was shocked at myself. And I know this student was equally is shocked, but it was a lesson to be learned. And, and it surprised me because I, I didn't, you know, initially I want to react like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this just happened. But then I thought, yeah, well, what happened? Because I didn't prepare the students enough like I should have. And so what do I need to change about myself? And what lessons do I need to help this student learn because of, you know, whatever just transpired in our class? And uh, so that was all part of the same year of kind of changing over to seeing the student and not the behavior. But it's not easy because there are a lot of different behaviors that are out there that we experience. And um, yeah, I don't know. That's. <laughs> yeah, I love this because like it, it asks a question and, and I think that this is the, this is the, the key of it is what is it that we, we need to, to change about ourselves? Like internally, it, it's kind of saying we're not perfect. We we've made mistakes. And in fact, like there are times where we are not proud of what we've done. Um, and I, I'm guilty of that 100%. Like there, there are many times where, you know, maybe I was short. Maybe I didn't respond the way that would have been ideal in this situation. Like for me, it's, it's kind of like, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And, and the I do, like the, that part is wrong. Like it, it's like I've, I've actually done something that I, I didn't want to do. Or um, in, if I was thinking rationally, like I wouldn't have done it that way. So, so that totally makes sense to me. And I, I guess the, the question I have is like, how do you, how do you like dig yourself out of that? You know, cause sometimes you feel like, oh man, I, I've like, I've gone so deep, you know? And, and yeah, I can understand like for on one case, like if you had a new uh, set of students next year, you could just say like, oh, okay, well, like that's going to happen in, in a, in a coming year. Like I'll do things differently. I'll start again, but there isn't like a starting again when it comes to your kids and your family. And so, I mean, even if you did it, like, let's say some, sometime early in the semester, I mean, you still have the whole semester with them. So do you have any suggestions for like, what do people do when you've kind of made that, that mistake? You, you've, you've done those things. Like, how do we, how do we use that as an opportunity to go like, yeah, I, I've done things that maybe I'm not always proud of and that's okay. Right. Like you, you've done the same. You'll, you'll run into this situation too. Um, when you're, you're older and, and maybe you've already done, you've, experience this personally yourself the question is okay but what are you doing about it <laughs> right? right like how what did you do a, like it almost didn't matter what you actually did it was like what did you do afterwards um that kind of models the behavior of what you would like to see uh, maybe you can speak to that <laughs> yeah well you you just said it exactly like i would say it too it's it's okay. what is it that you do next that makes the difference like and for me, there were times where, and the big thing too, is like taking ownership of it as well. And there were times where 
just, and I've written about it or talked about, it, I don't, I don't know which or both at this point. And I, I've had some things happen in my classroom where there was a behavior and I reacted and I, I, I did not really, I was not happy with how I reacted. I didn't feel very good about it. And it bothered me so much the rest of the night to the next day. And, and that's when I, I sat down with, if it was a student or if it was the whole class and I just said, look, you know, I did not handle this the way that I should have. Um, and this is the reason in a, in a couple of cases, like in my most recent book, I talk about one, one thing that happened a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, at the time, there were some other things going on that I was experiencing. And that's not to, to be made as an excuse. But it helped me to see why I reacted to that. And then I thought, okay, now I need to fix this. Like, what do I need to do to make this right? Because my reaction didn't just have an impact or didn't affect just the one student. Anybody else who's in that same space is also impacted by that. And so, you know, taking ownership of it, having the conversation and then working to build and continue to build the, the, the relationships and being vulnerable enough to say, yeah, you know, I was wrong or this is why I was wrong. And this is what I'm doing to change that. And that, you know, sometimes we're fortunate in education that we do if a, and I don't know how students would feel about this sometimes too, but you know, we have them like for me, I'm the only Spanish teacher. So if they, if they take the steam course with me in eighth grade, and then if they take four years of Spanish, there are some students that I've had for five and in some cases, six years, if they started language even earlier. And so we have, I mean, I love that because I get to see their growth over time, but I also get to see my growth over time. But if you do make those mistakes, we tend to know that we have opportunities to kind of learn from them. And that's an important lesson for us, but it's also an important lesson for students too, about taking ownership, about the power of forgiveness, of building those relationships. And it's not always going to be easy um, that even because we're adults doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes so that we always know what we're doing. I mean, I'm the first to say, like, I'm not an expert. I make tons of mistakes every single day. And luckily, over the years, I, I've had opportunities where I've been able to go back and have these conversations with students, or I've had students come back and say, you know, remember when I was in 10th grade, and I did that? And I'm like, yeah, I remember. And, and we're talking, I mean, years later, and they say, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, look, you were, you're a 10th grader, you know? I said, and, and I didn't necessarily react the best way either. I mean, we're all just, we're learn every single day we're learning as we go. And it doesn't matter how long you've been teaching. I mean, we are always going to encounter challenges or we'll make mistakes or we could have done something differently and it might've led to a better outcome, but that's just, that's just the way it is. And it's like you said earlier, it's, you know, what do you do with what you've learned. And if you've made a mistake, or if you think, oh yeah, you know, I wish I would have done something differently. Okay. Now that you know that, you know, the, the quote, I love quotes when we know better, we do better. And I didn't quote it exactly the way it is, but my Angelou, that's the quote. So for a long time, I really didn't know better, but now that I know better, I've been very intentional about trying to do better and sharing like, this is what I did. Don't do the same thing that I did. Um, make mistakes and learn from them. But I think it's just being honest and taking ownership and working at it every single day uh, to continue to improve is the best that we can do. I love that quote. Like when we know better, we do better. And, right. you know, it, like it's, it's building a culture of like celebrating failures, essentially. It right. Like it, it's, right. it's saying that, you know, how are you going to know better? Like you, you start off like, who, who trains you on this stuff? Like, oh, this is the way that you should behave around young people. <laughs> it's like, it's not like you, you grew up and, oh, by the way, there's like a, there's like a working with young people, um, you know, like course that you have to take before you're allowed. No, <laughs> that's not how things work, right? Like you, you've got to build this, this culture of like celebrating failures. And I think this is why uh, the, the stories are so powerful for me. And I'd, I'd love to, to get like some of your examples. Mm. If you if you don't mind sharing some of those because they're so powerful, like I want to make sure that we have some time for, for for stories. Like, what are those examples of like when we know better, we do we do better? Um, that you can share with us. Like, it could be from your book, or be from your own experience. What are the ones that are really impactful for you? Yeah, I, I mean, just for me, when I think back to well, all the years that I've been teaching, there are 
fake interactions that I've had, you know, that I, like I said, I have not been that many where I would say that I, like, I've lost it, but I have some that really taught me a good lesson. And one time, and I wrote about this too, is I had a student, we had a, a very large study hall. I think there were 90 some students in the study hall, most of which were seventh, eighth graders, three teachers trying to manage it. You know, it, it, there wasn't a lot of studying going on because they wanted to be social. And it just, there, there was, I don't even know what brought it on, but it ended up a, a screaming match between me and a student and the student stormed out and I was going after the student like, okay, go to the office. And I'm pretty sure that's where they were going anyway. And it was towards the end of the year. And uh, I just remember like how awful I felt like, oh, you know, and, and it wasn't just me and that student. I mean, we're in a room of like 100 people who all witness and experience that. And I thought, oh my gosh, like how many, like you forget who's in the room, you forget who's observing. And luckily, I guess, or you could say unluckily, it just depends. Uh, it was the end of the school year. And then the next year, uh, which is only a few months later, I had the same student in the first year of Spanish. And we really, we uh, hadn't spoken, like there wasn't a period of time because <laughs> that was a while ago. That was before now where, you know, I would take the ownership and I would have those conversations. And so yeah. it was kind of like, just like under the rug a little bit. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, how was this going to go in this class? And I remember walking past the desk and the student said, I'm sorry about study hall. And I was like, wait, what? And, you know, that had been two and a half, three months at that point prior to it. And that was just like the start of the conversation. And that goes back about 10 years ago now. And I, I have, I'm lucky I get to see this student almost every year at different uh, school kind of community events. And it just, it's a reminder to me to always think about how I'm going to react to something and like, what's the behavior, which goes back to seeing the student, not the behavior. And so yeah. that is one of my favorite stories because it was, it was pretty heated and everybody, I mean, I heard about it from other students and of <laughs> course, you know, it doesn't take long for it to go through the school, especially in a small school to say, Oh, we heard that you lost it in the cafeteria. And, and uh, it ends up being like a telephone game because the messages is always, it's always totally changed around. So the way that it actually happened compared to what the end story is, is never the same. No, no, it, like it Not, turns into the, its, its own beast and it, it, it yeah. develops a life of its own. Uh, I can yeah. totally see that. Totally. Um, Rich, like, uh, I love this because, uh, you know, it, it was this kind of, yeah, like I, I recognize this happened and I... I did something about it. And it, 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 there's that kind of wrap up at the end, which I thought was really powerful. Like, I think it's the, it's like this power in forgiveness. Like it is one thing to say that, you know, you've done something and then you have walked away from it. Right. Like, or, you know, you know what, like it, it was in the past, you know, I'm, and, and so what happened was there never was any closure on the initial incident. Right. right? And it wasn't until a little bit later when you, you, you met them um, you're thinking like, oh, now I have to deal with this. But actually, it's like, this is really good for you. It's really good for the other person too, to go like, look, that was me, right? And yeah, I made a mistake here. And right. and I'm really sorry about what happened. And you're right, like, you know, I, I shouldn't have been doing it in that way. Or, you know, maybe the other person comes back and says like, yeah, like it wasn't right for me to yell uh, at that point. And it, I don't know how to describe it. Like there's a there's a peace, you know, you get when you, you forgive another person. You kind of say like, wow, you know, like I used to have like this, this stuff like all like inside. And then I, you know, we, we talked to each other and we forgave each other. And wow, right. like I feel different now. <laughs> yeah, I feel yeah. like, you know, wow, this great burden has been lifted <laughs> off of my shoulders. I'm not, I'm not constantly thinking about this stuff anymore. I don't need to because I know mm -hmm. that the other person feels okay with it. You know, they feel like, yeah, they know that this thing happened, but they're, and you know, they're, they've forgiven me and they've, they've moved on. So right. uh, it's powerful. It's powerful. <laughs>